Can we compute with constants? Well, in a way we can. If we have a concept of uh, dogs, and we have, an, on the other hand, a concept of cats, we may want to compute the concept that generalizes them both. Like, for example, we could say that the concept of all animals generalizes both the concept of a dog and the concept of a cat, because every dog is an animal and every cat is an animal. Uh, the concept of domestic animal or a pet also generalizes dogs and cats, but it's more specific than uh, the concept of animal. Or, on the other hand, if we have uh, a concept of uh, triangles and a concept of all geometric figures that have a right angle, we may want to compute a concept that includes those that fall under both these concepts. So, the concept that is, in a way, specializes both these concepts. It would include right angle triangles. Now, let's see how we can do things like this with formal concepts. So, again, let's say that we have two formal concepts of the same formal context, JMI. And the concepts are A1B1 and A2B2. We say that the greatest common subconcept or we'll also call it infimum, of these two concepts, um, let's denote it like this, A1, B1, uh, A2, B2, so A1, B1, which A2, B2 is a uh, by definition, uh, the following formal concept. Its extent is the intersection of A1 and A2, and uh, its intent is the closure of uh, the union of B1 and B2. So the intuition is like this. We want to define the greatest common subconcept of two concepts, A1B1 and A2B2. So, objects that fall under this concept must fall under both A1B1 and A2B2. That's why we take the intersection of A1 and A2 as the extent of this new concept. And these objects, they all have properties from both B1 and B2. That's why in the uh, intent of the new formal concept, we have B1 union B2. But because intents must be closed, we take the closure. And similarly, we can define the least general super concept. We'll also call it supremum. of A1B1 and A2B2. Um, in this case, we take the union, the closure of the union of A1 and A2 as the extent and the intersection of the intents. So, B1 intersection B2 as the intent of the new concept. Um, what we want from this, uh, from these uh, subconcepts and superconcepts, actually we want we want four things. Um, so let's look at this one. A1 B1 wedge A2 B2. Uh, this is a great greatest common subconcept. So, the first thing we want from it is that it is actually a concept. So, A1, B1, which A2, B2 must be a formal concept of the context GMI.
And it is. I'll skip the proof. It's not very difficult, but a little bit boring and technical. However, it's not sufficient for this to be a concept. It must be a subconcept of both A1B1 and A2B2. It must be their common subconcept. So we should also have that A1, that this uh, infimum is indeed a subconcept of A1B1. And it's also a subconcept of A to B2. And this is easy to see. Its extent is A1 intersection A2, which is a subset of both A1 and A2. So by definition, uh, this is a subconcept of both A1B1 and A2B2. However, we need not only the not only any common subconcept, but the greatest common subconcept. In other words, if there is any other subconcept, common subconcept of A1, B1 and A2B2, it must be less general than uh, this one. So, for any concept AB such that AB is a subset of uh, A1, sorry, is not a subset, is a subconcept of A1B1, and uh, it's also a subconcept of A2B2. So for every such concept AB, we have that AB is also a subconcept of the infimum. Again, it takes some time to prove this, but this can be proven. Um, so the fourth point says that the infimum is indeed the greatest common subconcept of the two concepts. And the same or similar four points hold for, for the supremum. Now, to get some feeling for all this suprema and infima, let's look at an example. Um, I'm going to draw a concept lattice and uh, we'll see how you can find uh, infima and suprema of uh, formal concepts in this concept lattice. So let's say uh, we have a very small formal con context that has four geometric figures, a square, a rectangle, a right angle triangle, and an isosceles triangle. Actually, an equilateral triangle, so all sides are equal. And uh, we also have four attributes. Attribute A means that a figure has exactly four angles. Attribute B means that it has uh, exactly three angles. C means that it has a right angle. And D means that it has, uh, that all sides in this figure are the same, are equal. Uh, so, for example, if you look, if we look at this figure, a square, we can see that it has exactly four angles. So it has attribute A. It also has equal sides. All sides are equal because it has attribute D and it has attribute C. So it has a right angle. Now let's look at two uh, formal concepts. Let's uh, look at, say, this one. And uh, uh, this one. So the first formal concept is uh, uh, 
in its extent, we have these three figures. So we have a square, a rectangle, and a right angle triangle. And it, it, its intent has only one attribute, attribute C. Um, this is this concept. Now let's look at this one. This uh, has, uh, what does it have? So its extent uh, contains the same figures except for the right angle triangle. So we have only a uh, square and a rectangle. And it, its intent contains an additional attribute A. So in the intent we have C A. Now let's compute the uh, supremum of these two concepts. The supremum is just the concept that is more general. The first concept is the concept of all figures that have a right angle. And the second concept is the concept of all figures that have a right angle and that have exactly four angles. So this uh, concept is less general than this one. And so the supremum is the first one. Um, if we want to compute the infimum, then we can see that the infimum is uh, the, the one of the two which is less, which is the least general. So this one is less general than the first one, and so this is the infimum of the two concepts. If the two concepts are comparable, then uh, the infimum, the infimum is among them, and the supremum is also among them. If the two concepts are incomparable, for instance, let's look at this formal concept. Um, and, uh, and again at this formal concept, this one. So, in the extent of the first one, we have a, a right angle triangle, and its intent is BC, so the properties are BC. And here we still have the same thing, a square and a rectangle, and the uh, intent is CA. Now, if we compute the supremum of these two concepts, um, how can we see where the supremum is located in the diagram? We we'll simply go along the upward arcs from out of these concepts, and we find the first concept where these two meet. It's going to be this one. So there supremum is the concept, um, it's this concept, the concept of right angled figures. And if we want to compute the infimum, Um, then we should go along the downward arcs before they meet. And uh, they meet only in this node, in the bottom node. So this bottom node is the concept with the empty extent and with the intent that contains all the four attributes. And this is not surprising because uh, here we have to compute, we have to find a concept that covers the intersection of objects covered by this concept and this concept. But this concept covers only right angle triangles, and this concept covers only squares and rectangles. And there's no common object covered by both concepts. So we get this concept of nothing, the concept with the empty extent. On the other hand here, uh, we start with from these two concepts, and we um, the supremum includes all the objects covered by either this one or this one. So it includes a square, rectangle, the right angle, triangle, and the property 
the attribute that they have in common. There's only one such attribute, C.